I'm not going to lie, it's been a long time since I last saw an episode of the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, so I don't really have a ton of nostalgic context to add here other than I remember the show being pretty decent. Would I or anyone have guessed that an NES game based on this relatively obscure TV show would come out as late as 1993? Well, if not for my obsessive quest to catch them all and collect the whole library, I don't think I ever would have known this bad boy existed. The NES saw the release of four games based on Indiana Jones. The obnoxious Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, the identically titled but totally different games that were Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, one made by Taito and another by Ubisoft that we'll be getting to later, and lastly, the young Indiana Jones Chronicles. There was no Raiders of the Lost Ark, but if those other games are any indication, we probably dodged a bullet there. Starting off, you'll see on the title screen that the dreaded music on off option is present, usually a prime indicator of a horrific and repetitive soundtrack. And yeah, it totally is. It's one of those short loops that isn't that offensive on its own, but since every time you enter a room it starts at the beginning again, you'll start to get real sick of hearing the truncated repetition of those opening 5 seconds. I will say though, as the game goes on, there's less of these rooms that stall the music, and as such the later tracks are actually much more memorable. The graphics here are strangely hard to pin down. On the one hand, the sprites and landscapes are pretty decent, and remind me a bit of the excellent monster in my pocket, but on the other hand, the colors are really bland, like only three can exist on the screen at the same time. It's just strange for a game released this late in the system's lifespan to look this dreary, when something like, say, Little Samson came out around the same time and uses 8 million more colors. I mentioned this in my Paperboy 2 review, but late in the NES's lifespan, there were a few games that clearly seemed like they were developed for the Game Boy and then ported to the Nintendo with little effort. Unlike Cliffhanger or the equally terrible Last Crusade Ubisoft edition, Young Indiana seems like it got some upgrades including some decent scrolling areas and these rad cutscenes. Speaking of which, the story is actually pretty good. It's not exactly Ninja Gaiden or something, but it's fairly coherent and engaging. I'm impressed. The game itself, I'm surprised to say, is pretty fun. Seriously, if you've played those other indie games, there's no way you believe me that this is good, but I promise you, it's at least better than those other three titles combined. One thing I love, for instance, is the life meter. You start with a whip and a hat, but you can add other weapons and items. As you get hit, you lose these items until you're down to just one hit, and then the use of your fists. It's subtle, but this kind of weapon downgrading happens all the time in the Indiana Jones movies, and I feel like this is a tiny nod to that. The controls are smooth, the cutscenes and story are great, and most of all, the gameplay is actually enjoyable. It's kind of like a cross between Shatterhand and Castlevania. Your character moves quickly, which makes the pace more speedy, and unlike so, so many NES games, the hit detection is accurate and the jump mechanics are responsive. It is for sure an 8-bit action platformer, so it's not exactly easy by any means. In fact, it's ridiculously hard at times. The first boss battle with Pancho Villa takes perfect reflexes to beat, and if you die, you start all the way back at the beginning of the stage. Ouch. All in all, I'm downright flabbergasted that this game is as good as it is. When you dig online about the NES as much as I do, you've pretty much heard of every hidden gem from Guardian Legend to Bucky O'Hare to Kickmaster, but I've never, ever heard anyone speak glowingly about the young Indiana Jones Chronicles. It's absolutely not on the same level as those titles, but unlike almost all the other games I've reviewed recently, I would actually play this game again. Finally, an obscure NES game that everyone should play. It's a Memorial Day miracle.